Hey, what's up everybody? This is Legend Jeremy, and I'm just recording this video to give you some tips on how to play Aggro Shaman more effectively. Now, I've been playing Aggro Shaman a lot this season. I've probably paid, played about around 150 games just this season. I've gotten to Legend with it, and I've gotten so far up until like uh, around rank 175-ish uh, Legend with this deck. So what makes Aggro Shaman so powerful is it's got uh, first the most powerful weapon in the game, which is Doomhammer, where you can do 16 damage just with this weapon. And it's got an incredible, uh, about half minions and half spells, uh, which are all very powerful. And the thing that makes it such a strong aggro deck is the overload feature. Now, overload basically allows you to put out stronger, uh, stronger spells and stronger minions um, that cost less than, than normally because it makes you pay for it the next turn by giving you less mana the next turn. But now, because of certain cards, you can actually make uh, overload into an advantage or not so bad of a drawback. So with, for example, Tunnel Trog, you can buff up uh, your Tunnel Trog, giving extra attack for every overload. So if you play a Tunnel Trog and then coin um, Feral Spirit, you turn your Tunnel Trog into, well, it gives you two extra attack. That's awesome. And then you also get Feral Spirits, which is a great card. Um, or for example, let's just say um, you're on turn four and you have no cards. And so you play Ancestral Knowledge to, to draw two cards. Well, you can use Lava Shock, uh, which does two damage, and but it also uh, destroys your overload crystals. So you can take away all those overloads so you're not overloaded the next turn. So uh, so with Lava Shock and Tunnel Trog, you can uh, either reduce overload to where it's not so much of a drawback, or you can uh, make it to your advantage. And so it's an extremely uh, high tempo deck with, uh, with a lot of burn to finish your opponent off with weapons and spells, but also some really powerful minions. So I wanna give you some tips and tricks on how to use this deck uh, more effectively. Okay, so the first thing you need to know is how to mulligan well. Now these are gonna be just kind of general things. Everything is always situational because uh, I can't go over every single class or every single, you know, you, you know what kind of deck your opponent's queuing into. I'm just gonna give you some general tips. So basically, if you are going first, so this means you do not have the coin, you need a one drop minion. So that means what I do, honestly, almost all the time, is if I even have two drop minions, so if I have a knife juggler or a totem golem, but I do not have a one drop minion, I will throw back my entire hand to try to get a one drop minion because having that on the board is so important. You need to start off with tempo and, uh, and it's worth the risk because uh, at least in my version of uh, aggro uh, shaman that I use, there's eight one drops. So the chance of getting uh, a one drop in your first four cards because you know after your first three uh, on your turn, you still draw one more card is really good. And so, uh, so, so I will always try, almost always try to hard mulligan for a one drop. If you are not quite so risk adverse, I'll allow you to keep one two drop minion, but that's it. Then you have to throw back the other two. There's no situation where you should be keeping spells or anything like that and not trying to mulligan for a one drop minion. Now, if you do have the coin, it's different because you're always able to use the coin on turn one to coin out a two drop. So in that case, what you're looking for is two drop minions or one drop minions, and uh, usually you will throw back all spells. The only spells that I usually will keep, um, uh, potentially keep, and that's usually only if I already have a minion in my hand or multiple minions, is Lightning Bolt because there's certain cards that um, that are that can kind of wreck you early. So I, if I think that my opponent ha has a potential to play a Knife Juggler early, or uh, so that would be a Paladin usually or a uh, a Hunter. Or if my opponent um, is going to play a Darnassus Aspirant, so that's Druid, I might keep a Lightning Bolt because those cards I would want to remove immediately. 
So keep that in mind guys, what you're looking for in the beginning is to push the tempo with minions. You are not looking, your spells are for later in the game to do, to, you know, to finish them off with face damage, uh, you know, after probably he's got some taunts up or something like that, but you want to push the pace with minions in the early game. The only other thing I would mention about uh, the mulligan phase is let's say you're facing a druid or a mage who can um, kill your one health minions. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't care about that. Like if he has to use a, a, a coin plus a hero power to to kill uh, a leper gnome or an abusive sergeant, that's that's totally fine. Like I don't care about that. It's you don't need to uh, worry about maximum value if you. Uh, only have one one drop on turn one and it's an abusive sergeant that extra two attack it doesn't matter if you don't get that value from it it's more important that you get it out on the board than throwing it back or not playing it and waiting until you can buff something else up so uh, don't don't be overly concerned about value this is an aggressive game tempo and pushing large amounts of damage are more important than getting the most amount of value for your cards. Now the combos for this deck are really uh, just two. Tunnel Trog which gets buffed up with uh, overload cards. So Tunnel Trog plus any card. So the, 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 ultimate, the ultimate combo with this is Tunnel Trog on turn one, Coin, uh, Feral Spirits. Because then <clears throat> you have a 3-3 three, three, uh, tunnel Trog with two, two, three taunts. And at that point in time, it, usually it's GG. Like, I mean, that is an incredible combo. Your other combo is Doomhammer plus Rockbiter, which allows you to attack for 10 damage because the weapon has Wind Fury. So if you have Rockbiter, usually the right play is to keep it for, um, for your Doomhammer, but there's certain situations where you're facing another aggressive deck and you need to clear, uh, clear one of his minions so that your minions don't die and you can keep pushing tempo. So usually keep it, but usually uh, sometimes against an aggro deck or it's, it's, you just have to remove one from his to keep your board. Uh, it, it's okay to use it. Now Sir Finley Mergleton is in this deck and it's a very powerful card. It allows you to change your hero power which is really good because the shaman hero power kind of sucks. Uh, I mean the uh, and not only that but it's also random like you got a one in four chance and oftentimes the one one or the healing totem doesn't really do much damage. Uh, the, the spell power totem is pretty good, but it's a 1 in 4 chance of getting it because there's a lot of spells in this deck. But anyways, you usually want to uh, change your hero power. So the ultimate hero powers, uh, if you get one of these two, you can just, you know, you can just let out a woohoo. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's steady shot, which is the hunter hero power and uh, also the Warlock hero power, where you get to uh, draw a card but take two damage. If you, get one of, um, if you can get one of those two, you are set, you are uh, in a great position. Uh, if you don't get presented with one of those two options, uh, your next best one would probably be the Druid hero power or the Mage. Uh, it's debatable on those two because the Druid, I mean, you not only uh, works really well with um, with the doom hammer because then you're actually giving your doom hammer an extra attack so you can do six damage with uh with your uh your weapon each turn uh the the mage is really good though too because whereas the druid uh it's if your opponent has taunt up you can't hit the face whereas the mage can go against face so those two are good and situational on which one you would pick but i usually would go with the druid over the mage um <clears throat> Paladin would probably be next, although it's not, you know, there's nothing to, to get excited about if you choose Paladin. It's just the one, one, you know, often you're not going to use it much, only if you have a leftover hero power, a leftover two mana to where you would use that. And the ones that suck uh, would be the rogue hero power because um, the rogue uh, hero power can't be used when you have Doomhammer equipped. And if, you're, if, if things are going well for you, you're going to have Doomhammer equipped for much of the mid to late game. So, um, so you, you're not able to use that hero power while you have Doomhammer. Uh, also armor up uh, and, uh, and healing, so the priest and the warrior hero power. Usually you would never pick those unless you're in the late game and you're gonna die really soon and, and that would be a choice to
to pick those. So uh, just remember also that if, uh, let's just say you're, you're, you're farther in the late game, you don't have much to do, you're able to use the Shaman Hero Power, play Sir Finley, and then you're, use your new Hero Power. So when I'm faced with a decision between Life Tap and Steady Shot, uh, it really depends on what kind of deck I'm playing. If I'm playing a mid-range or a control deck, I'll almost always choose life tap because then you just need more cards. But if I'm facing an aggressive deck, whether it's a zoo or a hunter, as long as I have some cards, like if, if like I have no cards in my hand, I'll still probably take life tap. But uh, if I have some cards and I think I can just continue to play them out without having an empty hand, I'll almost cho always choose Steady Shot. So those are some thoughts on how to best use Sir Finley in this deck. Now, the last thing I want to cover is trading. Now, uh, y you know, the stereotypical face hunter, and you know, it, it is often true, is it's just face, 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 and you know, you just forget about the board. But the fact is, is that that's not always the right play. There, you know, trading is inevitable in most games. There are some games where I just go face and I make my opponent make all trades. Yes, that happens, but that's not always the case. And especially if you're facing another tempo deck uh, like Tempo Mage or Secret Paladin or another aggressive deck such as a Mirror Match or a Face Hunter or an Aggro Paladin or something like that. Uh, trades are inevitable because they can kill you before you get to the late game so therefore you have to make smart trades uh, to ensure you can uh, stay alive maintain control because you basically you want to be in the put yourself in the position you want to make trades to put yourself in the position so you are the aggressor rather than being on the defense and once you get to that position to where you're you got more on your board you're pushing more damage you put him on the defensive to where now he has to make the trades and you can start going face so there's certain trades that you want to make to put yourself in that position so I really encourage making smart trades. Smart trades are basically uh, removing cards that can wreck you. So that's things like Knife Juggler and Aspirant and, um, you know, some a lot of times Mana Worm or th things like that that can really punish you. And uh, trades that are in your favor. So <clears throat> if my opponent has, let's just say, uh, a 4-1 minion and I have a 1-1 uh, totem. I'm going to more than likely trade that 1-1 one, one into the 4-1 uh, because one damage on face is usually pretty insignificant and also if I remove his minion I'm buying myself more turns. It's less damage to my face so that I can play the game more turns to do even more damage. So favorable trades, removing minions that can wreck you uh, is, is very wise. Now there are some times where it's right to not even make a smart trade, but the only time usually where I'm gonna do that is when uh, I know that I have lethal the next turn if I go face. Okay, let me give you an example of a situation where there's a smart trade which I would not take. Like for example, let's just say you're playing against a hunter, and the hunter has 11 health, and uh, he has a five attack, one health minion on the board, and you have a one health minion on the, uh, sorry, a one one on the board. Okay, that would be a smart trade to remove that five one minion, but let's just say, like he has 11 health, and you have Doomhammer equipped with a rock biter and nothing else in your hand. Well, in that case, you need to get him down to 10. So attacking the face to get him down to 10 damage so you can kill him next turn is much smarter unless you assume he's going to kill you that turn. So that would be a situation where you kind of just ignore smart trades and just go face even if it doesn't seem to make sense so that you can win the next turn. So anyways, guys, those are a few of my tips for playing Aggro Shaman. I hope that helps make you better. But the, the number one thing that I would recommend is just to watch. If you want to become a good Aggro Shaman player, is to watch a lot of Aggro Shaman gameplay. Uh, I'm going to be posting 
Uh, I've already posted quite a few of those videos. I'm going to be posting even more this month as I'm playing quite a lot of it because basically you just want to see in different situations how people react. Like how do how do people react when when you're facing off a mid-range druid versus a control warrior versus a zoo? What do they do in this situation? What do they do in that? So uh, I hope this has been helpful. But really, the the way you're going to become better not only by playing more of it yourself, but also watching people um, uh, play play this in different situations will be beneficial to you. All right, well that's enough. Go tear it up on Ladder with Agro Shaman. Hope this has been helpful. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Legend Jeremy. Thank you so much for checking in my Hearthstone video. Uh, if you want to keep up to date with what I'm doing, I post videos here on my YouTube channel every day, Monday through Friday. So click subscribe below on YouTube to keep up to date with when I post a new vid. Also, I'd so appreciate your support. If you wouldn't mind when you're done here, clicking like below on this video. And why don't you just leave me a comment because I'd love to hear from you, hear what you're thinking. So thank you so much for your support. Brofist.